It's a really good presentation today because it's kind of the key to making Facebook work. And, um, you know, a lot of people will complain that Facebook doesn't work for them. And one of the reasons is because they're not doing remarketing or retargeting. And so today is kind of the secret source that uh, a lot of people just don't know about. And they're not aware of that it exists and they're not aware of the power of it. And if you don't know how to do retargeting or you're not retargeting with your Facebook ads, then you're just wasting your money. You're just throwing your money away. Um, and I wanna, I'm gonna explain to you exactly uh, what that means and why it's important. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So this is something that agencies do. Very few business owners know how to do it and I'm gonna show it to you tonight. So I'm pretty excited to show it to you all and I hope you get lots out of it. And more importantly, I hope you actually do it. Okay, so let's just wait around now. If you guys have any questions before we start, we'll just wait for a few more people to get on. Um, so there's a chat there. Click on the chat button and then type all your questions in. Um, I'm going to give you everything I've got tonight. I'm going to show you a lot of stuff. I'm going to do my best. But if you want to help me and make it enjoyable for me, then the best thing you can do is ask questions because I love answering questions and I'm here and I know a lot about Facebook and I feel like I give more when I answer your specific question as opposed to just asking you, just telling you stuff that I think you should know. So if you, uh, if you wanna um, make it good for me in the chat, ask the questions. I'd love to see them come up. It shows me that you're engaged and I'd love to answer them. So at any point, type the question in and I will answer it for you. Okay, I might leave it and come back when I need to, but um, love questions. All right, so there's quite a few of you on now, so why don't we get started? So thanks for coming, guys uh, and girls. Uh, thank you because um, you know during COVID, it's been we haven't done a lot of meetups, but over the last few weeks, I've done like three in a row, and um, this is my third one. I've got another one next week. Next week's on webinars, and so I'm just going to keep doing these until the end of the year. I, I just got really tired of not sharing with the group and um, I'm looking forward to sharing everything I've learned over the last six to seven months. It, it has been huge for me. Um, it, it has, my business has just done really well and, uh, and that's my time to share and give back to, to you guys. So uh, without further ado, let's talk about um, Facebook remarketing or retargeting and why it's important and why you should do it. So on the screen here, I have a bit of a diagram that I, um, I use with my clients and I, when I first work with them, I map out the funnel we're gonna build for them. Now, what's great about Facebook is the funnel, a lot of people know what this is, right? So this is an email kind of funnel, you could call it. So you send an email and two days later, you send another email and two days later, you send another email and a week later, you send another email and Two weeks later, you send another email. So it's an email funnel, but not a lot of people know that you could do the same thing on Facebook. So basically what we do is we show someone uh, a video or an ad, image ad, to download an ebook, okay? Now, if they sign up for that ebook, then they go here and they get their first email that delivers the email. Uh, and then a day later, they get the next one and two and three and whatever, whatever we uh, opt for. But simultaneously, we can then show that same person a second ad, okay? And what we do is we stop showing them this ad and we show them this second ad. And if you look here, um, we can say, show this ad to anyone who watched video number one from one to seven days. So the first to the seventh day, they see this ad. And then from days eight to 14, they see this ad. But the way we get them to show this ad is we say, show people who watched this video between eight to 14 days, and we exclude people who watched this video um, between one and seven days. So we're excluding people. So we're saying, show it to everyone who's watched it within a 14 day period, but extract the one to seven day people because those people are seeing the, the second ad and these people are seeing the third. And then what we do is we say on days 15 to 21, show people the fourth ad. But the way we make that happen is we say we make an audience on Facebook. And this is what I'm going to show you tonight. 
how do we say show it to people who saw the video in the last 50, 21 days the last 21 days show it to them but exclude people who watched the video in the past one and this should be sorry that's something else eight to 14 days okay so we're saying 21 days minus the minus the eight to 14 and minus the one to seven so we're excluding all those people does that make sense type into the chat if it makes sense or if it doesn't make sense what i've just shown you i'm not moving on until you type it in the chat because i need to know if that has understood if you don't understand it that's fine i'll explain it again i'll explain it a different way okay but it's important that you know okay so it looks good makes sense looks good pretty sure so makes sense okay so Shane said, pretty sure. So <laughs> let me go through it again, just quickly. So the first time we show an ad to people, we show it to everyone. Then as soon as they watch one, um, you know, three seconds of the video or 15 seconds, or they land on our website, we can say, show it to people who landed on the website in the last one to seven days, or watch the video in the last one to seven days. And we say, show them this ad and exclude everyone else, okay? Then we say, okay, well, what happens between eight and 14 days we'll show these people a separate ad um and what we have to show it to people up to 14 days and subtract the one to seven day people okay so that's what we're going to show you tonight and this here is the most powerful thing you can do when it comes to facebook if you're not doing this this is why you're not doing well and if i can i might show you a client i might show you a client of how this works for them actually i probably should but before i do I just want to say the other thing you can do is you can send this email on one to seven days and then eight to 14 days, you send the second email and then um, 14 to 21 days, you send the third email. So what you're doing now is you're showing them an ad on Facebook for seven days and you're emailing the same content. And so now you're getting them through email, Facebook. And the other thing you can do is you can SMS them. So I'm going to show you a great app today that helps you SMS. So um so yeah, so you can hit them with SMS, with email and with a Facebook ad for seven days. And then you move them to the next stage and then the next stage. And that is how you actually take a prospect off Facebook who likes your content and warm them up until they're ready to make a booking with you. Okay. All right. So. All right. So let me, let me get into Facebook ads manager. You know what? I might show you. A, here's a client of mine, Qualify Me. I'm just going to do Lifetime. I'm going to show you the funnel we built for them. Okay, so if we scroll down, this is an older campaign. Let me just scroll down and close this. Okay, any questions so far? Let me know if there's any questions. Ah, wrong, wrong one. Okay, Qualify me old okay in lifetime okay so let me show you something here so this is the leads view actually let me do sd report scroll across okay website leads that's what we're looking at okay if you look here we have See here, this is top of the funnel, right? So top of the funnel, we had these one, two, three, four. This is the first ad they saw and we got this many leads, okay? Out of that campaign over a period of time. Then the middle of the funnel, one, two, three, four. So you can see here, this is electricians, plumbers, builders, general trades, okay? Then we say middle of the funnel for general trades, electricians, plumbers, builders. And look, these leads came on the second ad. Okay, and then we say bottom of the funnel, this is the third ad, one, two, three, four, for all the different trades. These leads came from the third ad. And this is LT1. Okay, this is um, the fourth ad. And you can see that these are the leads that came from the fourth ad. And so you can see just with that, that was over a period of, I think, four to 
six weeks we were showing those ads. And it's amazing because what you, we would notice is some weeks we get quite a lot of leads from the top of the funnel, hardly any from the middle, lots from the bottom, and then a couple from the, the, the long-term, the LT1, the fourth one. And the next week it would all change. Heaps from this one, not as many from the bottom, a few from the middle and hardly any from the top. But every week it'd be changing because people were at different stages. So Maddie says, can you only do this with video ads or could you do it with images if they interact with the ad? Okay, that's a good question. So the way you can retarget people at the moment is anyone who watches a video for a certain period of time or anyone that lands on your website. So if they click the ad, they have to land on the website and then you can retarget them. So you say anyone who landed on the website in the last one to seven days. You can't retarget people who just click the ad and don't land on the website. You can't retarget people who like the ad. You can't retarget people who comment on the ad. It's only people who click and land on the website. So you can't retarget people who click the ad. You can't do that. Only people who land on the website. The other thing is if you're using a lead form, you can retarget people who click the lead form and you can, because that's opening the lead form. So that's called open lead form. So you can retarget people who open it and you can retarget people who submit the lead form, okay? So that's all the retargeting you can do. Uh, can you retarget people who landed on the website even if they haven't clicked on an ad? Yes, yes. And that's the power of retargeting. Thanks for saying that, Teresa. Now listen to this, think about this. If you pay Google ads, right, to get people from, the web, from Google to your website. Now just say you're paying $10 a click right? So $10 a click to get 10 people to the website. Out of the 10, one person signs up. So it's $100 to get someone to sign up for your, uh, to have a call or to actually call you. That's $100. So one person out of 10 has contacted you. What about the other nine? Most Google ads people don't care about the other nine. They just say, keep paying us money and we'll just keep getting more people. What you do is you make a retargeting ad that says, show my ad to anyone who hit this page on the website that they're going to from Google ads in the last one to seven days. And then all the people, the nine people who missed out on doing anything with you on Google, you then, the next time they go to Facebook, they're seeing a Facebook ad about the same product that they landed on on your website. So you make the ad the same product as what they clicked on on Google. Does that make sense? Sorry, can you retarget to people who watched a video ad but don't click? Yes, yes, you can. So I'm gonna show you how all this works. So you can retarget to people who watch the video but don't click, that's the power of video. That's why video is so important on Facebook. So let me just say that one more time with Google ads. This is where most people squander their investment of money in Google ads. They pay for 10 people one person takes action, the other nine, they just let them go. What you should be doing for pennies in the dollar is to show ads to people who didn't sign up when they go to Facebook and drive them back to the website. And that costs cents in the dollar, okay? So that is a very powerful strategy that we do. And most Google ad agencies don't care about it because they don't know Facebook and they, they just don't care. And so if you're a Google ads, if you're doing Google ads, definitely do that, okay? So let's now, so that's a client there. Um, I guess what I'll do now is just see, maybe I'll just do a demo site. Yep, put a demo site here. Okay, so Let's close this and close this. Okay, so let's create an actual retargeting campaign. So the first thing we wanna do, I'm just gonna use this as the first one, okay? So let me, just, let me just create it. Let me start from scratch so there's no ambiguity. So I'm gonna create a new campaign. I'm gonna say conversions. I'm gonna say continue. All right. And so here's the campaign. I'm just gonna say top of the funnel. I'm gonna call it retargeting. It's good to give them very um, detailed names. And then I'm gonna click next. So that's the campaign. This is the ad set. The ad set is the audience. So if you wanna show it to 10 different audiences, you have 10 different ad sets. And this is the ad. 
So with the audience, um, let's just say it's a lead ad. So we're, we're gonna do it like a download for an ebook. And that's typically a lead ad. Now I haven't set up a conversion here and I don't wanna go into the detail of this, but you can ask me if you care. I'll explain it to you, but I'm not gonna go into a lot of this detail because we're trying to just go into the retargeting component, okay? Uh, daily budget, I'll just put that down to $5. Um, an audience, we'll just do the whole of Australia. Okay, so I don't really mind about that. Placements automatic is what you, you should be doing now as a business owner. Um, Facebook's recommending it. I've been getting really good results. A year ago, we were getting shocking results with it, but the algorithm has changed. Um, I was under the impression, so Vlad says, I was under the impression the cost per result for a conversion campaign was quite high unless you make a lot of regular sales. Yes, that's true, um, Vlad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna edit this so optimize for ad delivery conversions. I'm now gonna edit that and say optimize for landing page views. So what optimization means is that when Facebook, so Facebook knows everything about you and everything about people, everything about people on Facebook. So it knows who the clickers are, who the buyers are, who the ones that download, who likes, who comments, who shares. It knows everything about you. So what Facebook says here is if you do a conversion campaign and your conversion is downloading an ebook, Facebook knows who is the ebook downloaders on Facebook. So then Facebook, instead of showing it to the whole of Australia, it'll show it to like 100,000 people who it knows will just download ebooks on that topic, right? If you optimize by landing page view, it means Facebook's not gonna show it to people who download because that's a very small segment of the market. They're going to show it to people who click and land on the website. So those people are different people. Now, within that subset of people who click and land are the people who click, land, and convert. And so what you want to do is you don't want to go narrow with your optimization because it's only a small group of people. You want to pull it back a bit and go the step before. So the final step is download the ebook. The step before is land on the website. And the step before that is click. Okay. Now, if you look here, we can also optimize for clicks, right? Because there's a difference between someone who clicks. So you might get a hundred clicks, but you might only get 80 people land on the website because there are a whole bunch of people that get distracted and their internet's slow and they never get there. So you can optimize for clicks. You can optimize for landing page views and conversion. So you want to optimize for landing page views, okay? Because it's wider and I don't want to optimize for clicks. I don't care if they click. Remember, I want them on my website so I can retarget them. So I don't care if they click and don't land. I want to optimize so people to land. Now, whether they sign up, um, I'll deal with that later. They say, and this is changing all the time, that you need 40 conversions a week per ad set for Google to so for Facebook to have enough data to be able to optimize for a conversion. That's a, just ignore what I just said if it doesn't make sense. It's just not important. All you need to do is just say optimize for landing page views. Okay, so that's kind of the ad set set up. None of this matters to retargeting. Okay, I'm just doing it because I'm going through the motions with you. So here's the ad. So let's just write here. I'll just say this is ad number one. And I'll say ad number one. And the URL, I'll put um, marketingroadmap.co. So I'm just filling everything in so it accepts it, okay? So it's going to accept everything, all right? So that's it, here's my top of the funnel ad, okay? Oh, what I am gonna do is, I could, I don't have a video in here, but that's fine. Oh, I do, I do have a video, okay. Um, and just, just as a tip for you guys, um, if you click here, uh, an image. See this stock photos? This is an amazing tip because Shutterstock has amazing photos. And when you click on stock photos, it gives you access to every Shutterstock photo, right? So I think if you go on Shutterstock, it's, it's like $50 a month, you get 10 photos a month. That's all you get. It's really expensive, but it has world-class photos. Over here, Facebook gives you access to them for free. So you can type um, skateboard. 
And these are expensive photos that if you had to purchase outside of this would cost you a lot of money for your business. And so what you do is you click here and you choose the photo. Now, what you can do is go to Shutterstock, find a photo, because this is a bit cumbersome and slow, find the photo, copy the ID out of the URL or out of the photo ID, type the ID in here and it finds it, okay? That's another tip. And look, it puts it, now when it puts it in here, um, see how it's got all this um, Shutterstock written on it? It's got it written there so you don't rip it off. But when you go live, it disappears. See here, watermark won't appear in the final ad. This will save you a lot of money and make it increase the quality of your photos. Now, the problem with this is you, um, you can't edit the photo. Um, you can't write on it. You can't do anything. Now, I don't do anything anyway. Most of my ads are just photos. I don't write on them um, most of the time. Okay, so there's the tip for you. Okay, so now let's get into retargeting. So that's the top of the funnel retargeting ad. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna click on audiences. Uh, is it, there it is there. Oops. Okay, we click on audiences. And now this is where we create our retargeting audiences. So I'm gonna say, now it's under custom audiences. So let me go through this with you. So a custom audience is an audience, um, We'll go through them, okay? A lookalike audience is when you take an audience and you say, what's 1% of the population that looks just like these people in this audience, okay? 1% of the Australian population and Facebook matches everyone up and says, oh, these group of people look just like this, these group of people here. Um, special ad audience and saved audiences is interest targeting. When you say, I want people who are interested in Anthony Robbins and skateboarding, they're the, they're the, they're the lowest form of audience. They're, they're not very powerful okay these custom audiences are powerful so i'm going to click there and there's two types we, we can make we can make a video audience okay so we click on the video audience and we browse and we say i want to show my ad to anyone who watches 25 percent, 50 percent, 75 and 95 percent of the video now this will depend on what you're looking for so if if you're running a five minute ad and you say i want someone to show this to anyone who watched 95% of a five minute video, that person is gonna be highly hot. That's gonna be really hot for you, right? If they watched 95% of a five minute video, they're, they're pretty much your prospect, but it'll be a very small amount, okay? If you say show it to th someone who watched three seconds, you might have a hundred times more, okay? Or 50 times more people, but they're cold. So you're showing your ad more times to people, and it's not as, not as um, hot. You're kind of wasting your money a bit, but you need a balance. And I find 25% is pretty good um, if it's a uh, longer than two minutes. Um, if it's um, a 15 second ad, just do the whole thing, okay? Let's just say 25% and let's choose the video. I'm gonna choose um, sales driven website. Let's choose this one, see here. Um, 789 people have watched, you know, our three seconds of that video. And you can choose multiple videos. You can just choose. So you can go through and say, anyone who watched 25% of any of my videos, okay? So then you confirm. So you've got your videos there. Then you say, now this is important, in the last seven days, okay? So then I say, watched 25% of my videos in last seven days, okay? Create audience. Next, and then done. All right, now we then create another one. And we go to the same thing, 25%. We choose the same videos. Now, actually, I've forgotten which videos I chose. So, I, But you should choose the same videos, confirm. And then you say 14 days. So then you say watched 25% of my videos last 14 days. Great audience. And then next, and then this is just saying, do you want to, that's a lookalike audience. I don't want to do that. And let's do one more. So custom audience, video, 25% of the video, make sure it's all the same. I'll just choose these, it should be the same. And it's last 21 days. Now you can do two weeks at a time. You just um, do anything you like, watched 
25% of my videos in the last 21 days. Okay. All right, so you can see here they are here, seven, 14, 21 days. Okay, now there is another audience you can create and I recommend you do, I'm not gonna do it tonight, but you go website and you say on your pixel and you say anyone who visited a specific page on the website and that's the landing page that you're sending people to. So if you're sending people to a page on your website, then get the URL for that page, the sales driven website dot com slash and it might be ebook right whatever that is and then you go landed on ebook page in the last seven days so you do the same thing over and over again. seven days 14 days 21 days then you can retarget both okay i'm not going to do that whoops see i got that wrong let me just um click back here then I want to click edit and I didn't write seven days there. That has to be seven as well. Okay, any other questions, great tips. Do you do the same with the numbers? Yeah, okay, good. Yep, I do. So update audience. Okay, and then done. So I'm not gonna do the website one anymore because of time, but you can see that. Now the other thing, typically when you do this, I would typically, as a small business owner, I wouldn't just do a specific page. I'll do the whole website. So I would do this. I would go custom audience. And, and you know why? It's because you just don't have enough traffic to the one page, okay? So I'd say all traffic to the whole website in 14 days. So really, you're not big, like, you know, Tesla, Coke, um, Telstra, they get 5,000 people to one page so they can retarget. You probably get a hundred people every day, maybe 50 people every day, 10 people every day to your whole website. So don't retarget just one page, retarget the whole website. That's my tip to you when you're a small business owner. Okay. All right. So now we go back and we start doing the retargeting campaign. So let's go create a new audience. Oh, can I just say something here is we created one ad set with one ad. If you wanna do another audience, you just duplicate and you duplicate it and then you change the audience, okay? So you go down to the audience and you change the audience here. You might do, you edit the detail targeting and you say, um, anyone that likes Anthony Robbins. All right, now that's a second audience, okay? And I would then type Anthony Robbins. Okay, so the reason I'm telling you this is because in this top of the funnel, you might have six or seven audiences you're showing the same ad to. And you're trying to figure out which audience is the best audience. When you do your retargeting, you do create. And then again, you say conversion. Continue. And this is where kind of the magic happens. So we'll say retargeting. Um, last one to seven days, okay? And then we choose the conversion. This could be anything, let's just say it's a lead. Uh, any other questions while I'm going? Now, typically you'll do a small amount of money because it's only a small audience. So you only need a small amount of money. So the top of the funnel will typically have 70% of your budget and the middle middle and bottom of the funnel, the second, third ads might only have 30% of your money, okay? Because they're small audiences, you don't need as much money, okay? So put a small amount. Uh, then when you go here, you click on custom audience and you say, watch 25% of the video in the last seven days. And then you say, landed on the website in the last seven days. So now you're only showing it to people who watched 25% of the video in the last seven days and landed on the video in the last seven days. And um, if you look here, you leave everything else open because you don't need to target these people anymore because they're already targeted. You already ran the campaign. They clicked, they watched. They're the person you want. So don't go and say, oh, and they also must like The Bachelorette 
because now you, you'll have nobody in that audience that does that. This has to be left open. Okay, Vlad says, how many days do you run a retargeting campaign? So ideally you do it for six months. So what I do with my clients now is I run a 14 day cycle and every 14 days we give them a different ad and we go up to six months. But realistically, just do, if you can get one done, that's awesome. If you can get two, even better, if you can get three, just keep going. Um, but it all comes down to you creating different ads, okay? But do as many. My, my whole idea now is I want to do six months. Someone watches or clicks on the first ad or watches a video, six months they're in there just seeing different ads all the time. Okay, and that's how you nurture someone and you're there and you're there and you're there and eventually they like you and then they, like, it's like, it's like someone buying a house. Like, <clears throat> if they're going to buy a house, they might click because they're interested, but it might be four months before they actually go to buy the house. But if you're showing ads to them every single week, they kind of know you, they like you, they trust you. Of course, they're going to call you at some point, but it takes a while for someone to actually, they say it takes nine to 12 touch points before someone take, makes a buying decision. That's what this is all about. Okay, now the ad I'm not going to go into because the ad you can deal with. You've got to do a different ad, of course. Um, and so now what we do is we go, and this here is the middle of the funnel, retargeting. Okay. And then we're going to go create. I'm leaving all the good bits out. Um, not the good bits, but you know, uh, the bits that are important, we're not going through them. <clears throat> so this is bottom of the funnel. And you, whether you say bottom, middle, or bottom, middle or top, or you say campaign one, campaign two, camp, it doesn't really matter what you call it. It's just the way I do it. Um, let's go next. Now this is the key and we'll say retargeting. eight to 14 days, okay? And this is where the other magic happens. Let's say $1.50, and this is where if you get this right, you can go forever. So what you do is you say, show it to anyone who watched 25% of the video in the last 14 days, okay? But exclude people who watched it in the last seven days. And that's how you move people along. And that is the key. <clears throat> Did you say, Teresa said, did you say that 70% of the money in the top of the funnel? Yes. Yep. So 70% goes in the top of the funnel, roughly. Um, and then you can adjust, right? You can, if your middle of the funnel is so big, people are getting in there, then adjust it, go 60, 40, but that's just rough with the amount. And if you've got a long funnel that's six months, it's going to be like 50, 50, like in the rest of the funnel. But the top of the funnel is really there to drag people through the funnel. You need lots of money in that one. I don't know lots of money, it's percentage wise, because you could do all of this on $10 a day. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, of course, here, there is something that you can do here. See, it says optimize for ad delivery. With this, some people do this. Some people do landing page views. You definitely wouldn't do conversion because it's a very small audience. You could do landing page views. Some people do daily reach. So this means show it every single day to as many people as you can. Remember, it's a small audience. You know they're kind of interested because they watch 25% of the video or they've been to your website. So why not show it to them every day? It's only a small amount of money. So that's what a lot of people will do. And some people will do this landing page views, okay? So you can decide and test which one's better. I've had good success with both and I've had bad success with both. <laughs> so I can't tell you which one to do. Uh, Juan says, are you making this uh, recording available after it is going a little quick? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I'll just show you where to go to see it. So if you go here to marketingroadmap.co slash blog, these are the previous two videos that we've done. And this will go up in the next day or so, this one. So this is the first, first one we did. That's the second one. And so I'm just going to keep adding them to this blog. So I'll just put it in the chat. Now, if you've got any questions... I'm happy to slow it down a bit. Um, <clears throat> but um, Juan, it is difficult to get it the first time because it's confusing. So it's, it's normal. So watch it again and watch it again. And if you don't get it, that's fine. You can come back on. And I'm happy to answer questions from other weeks if you do, if you do come on, okay? All right, so, uh, okay, any questions so far? 
Any questions? Okay, good, good. All right, so let me, so, so that's basically how it is. And can I just say one more thing? Is I would also put in here, landed on my website, um, I would put landed on the ebook page or website in the last 14 days. And then I'd exclude the last seven. But because I didn't make that one, I don't have it. Um, so, so that's, that's how you do it. It's pretty simple. Now, the key to retargeting is you need ads that are interesting, right? So if you look here at our little chart, our funnel map, you can see that um, we have an ebook with a video, then we have a questionnaire. So the second ad might be a questionnaire. The third one might be just saying it's an image ad and just says, hey, book a call with us. The third one might be a video that has a call to action to a call. And we just keep changing them up. But everyone you want to add value and then have a call to action. So the video might add value and say, hey, why don't you fill in this questionnaire and we'll help you understand if we can help you or we'll help you understand if you can build a big business. The next one with the image out, it might be some text that says, um, you know, um, and educates them and then has a call to action. Typically in retargeting, in retargeting, you want video. Video is the best way to educate. You could do text, but no one really reads anymore. They just watch videos. So you want to have like a two to five minute video that educates. Um, let me see if I can show you a video. Do you guys want to see a video um, that, that's good for retargeting? Do you launch all campaigns at the same time or wait seven days, then fire? Yeah, typically you want to wait. You want to wait because if there's nothing in there, Facebook gets confused, okay? Let me show you one of a client that I'm using now, uh, Amplify Your Practice. And he's built this out. We're about to, we turn it on and then we turn it off. So we're about to turn it on again. But you can see here, here's his funnel. So he's got 167 leads for $2.79 a lead. Um, we turned on the funnel a little bit and we're editing it and we're gonna turn it back on. But basically top of the funnel, it's another one. It's a questionnaire. Um, team questionnaire. Oh no, sorry, we're, we're, we're going to turn this one off and that's the new top of the funnel because this one started going a bit slow. We were getting leads here for $1.20 and now it's gone up to two seventy nine. So now we're swapped it out with a different lead magnet and this is the funnel. Then for the one to seven days, they get, I think one to 14 days, they get um, this video. Then the next 14 days, they get this video and the next they get this video. And if I show you here, see, retargeting one to 15 days. So I've written that there. And if I scroll down, you'll see that it says watched through play GP referral script video last 15 days and visited the website in the last 15 days. So again, small client, it's just anyone who lands on the website, I don't care which one, I'm going to show them this next video because I know the only people that will be on his website are people in his target audience. Okay, Teresa, is video also good for e-commerce when you are not educating, selling art or cushions? Yes, yes. Video is is what you should be using in e-commerce all the time. So basically e-commerce is like this. Your first ad should be a video and it should be 30 seconds long around and it should be you demoing the whatever you've got, the cushion. You don't have to be on camera. Your face can be cut out. It could be just here and you demo and you talk and you show it. The second ad is an image ad that you retarget people with for the next three days and that ad just says buy it. And then the third ad is an image ad that says here's a discount. But your retargeting has to be like day one and then day three and then day six, very quick on e-commerce. It's like bang, 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 because it's an impulse buy. Okay, but that, what I just showed you is what every e-commerce company that's doing well is doing. Okay, you have to retarget on e-commerce. You cannot just show one ad. Okay. Um, Vlad, but if you turn off a campaign, doesn't all the learning get lost? Yeah, typically I turn off the, um, so if you look here with this ad here, I didn't turn it off, even though it's off, I didn't turn it off. I turned the ad sets off. And so it, I don't know if that rule still applies, but I, that's what I do. It used to apply a few years ago. Because if you turn it off, Facebook kind of like, doesn't reset it. It just, I don't know what it does. It, it, it wasn't best practice. A lot of my peers in the industry said, whenever they turned it off there, it never came back the same again. So they turned it off at the ad set level, it, it did. Okay. All right, so let me show you this. So this is the, I'll show you this one. 
No, actually, let me show you this one. This one's better. So tech tools, days 15 to 30. Um, let me go back. Let's open it up and I'll show you the targeting. So this is um, anyone who engaged in the video, watched the through play of GP referral script last 30 days and then went to the website last 30 days and we exclude people who watched the video in the last 15 days and the website visitors in the last 15 days. So can you see how we made that happen? And then I'll show you the video. This guy, Corey, is awesome at video. Um, so let's just bring it up. And he's not awesome because he's actually great. I'll tell you, tell me, watch this video for a little while and then tell me what you think. Um, see, I was distracted already. I'm presenting and I'm still distracted on Facebook. It's terrible. Facebook is awful. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, cool. oh, so you do you go to Studio X Fizz, Mike. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so, oh, there's no sound. Can you hear that? You have to master one of my favorite words in business, and that is leverage. The quickest way you can leverage. Okay, so tell me anything about that video that you noticed. Okay, well, I think that question is too ambiguous. Do you think he was reading, or do you think he was just making it up as he went along? Anyone else? Type in. Looks natural. Alfred says it looks natural. Vlad says making it up. Maddie says subtitles. He looks natural. Okay. Um, he read that. So there's an app you can get from your iPhone. And I do everything naturally. And I've rethought the way I'm going to do things in the future when it comes. I just write bullet points and I just talk, right? But there's an app you can get called Teleprompter 3, I think, for an iPhone. Prompter 3 iPhone, it's awesome. And have a look at this. There's another awesome tip. Look at this. So it's a camera app and you upload your script and it, see that there's your camera there and it puts it right there and it listens to your voice and it moves it as you talk. And that's what he did. He wrote his whole script out, spoke into it. I was blown away at the quality. I, I, I'm super impressed with, with what Corey did there. and. Then you can put all your effort into the expression as opposed to what am I going to say? So that's my other tip for you today. Use this video teleprompter three. Unfortunately, Android doesn't have one. They have another one, but you've got to use your normal camera and then drag this app over the top and move it. And it's fine. I've got clients that use it. They don't know about this one. And they said, oh, it's amazing, Marlon. But this one is awesome. So that's for all the iPhone users. I'll tell you one more tip is you use a lapel mic. So buy one off Amazon for, I don't know, $40. Um, people will forgive bad um, video. And with an iPhone, you don't get bad video, but they'll never forgive bad audio. So just put that in and it solves that problem. Yeah, it would work on the iPad. Yeah, I think so. Actually, I don't know because the iPad, it depends on where the camera is. I'm sure, actually, it should say here if it works on the iPad. Yeah, iPad. So it'll, yeah, see, works on the iPad. All right, so, okay. So any other questions that you guys have? Okay, so can I ask you guys a question? Um, what are you guys using for your CRM or your marketing automation? Drip, drip. And what are you guys paying? Can you put how much you're paying for it? Active campaign. Okay, not much, Mike. <laughs> There's a lot of money, Mike. Um, HubSpot. Mike, you need to change. 420 a month. Wow, Shane. What are you using, Shane? You didn't say what you were using. Oh, 20 a month. <laughs> That's a big difference. Okay. So um, let me show you something. I have used every app under the sun, and I am really, really excited about um, this app that we're started to use. It's actually made for marketing agencies. 
And um, let me just show you a couple of things. Um, let me show you what I love about it. So, okay, so the price is, if you buy it off them, it's like $97 a month US, but you get unlimited users, unlimited contacts, unlimited everything. That's it. That's all you pay, right? And, um, but I actually resell it now and we do a whole bunch of other stuff that we're doing, we're giving with it because we can. Let me just show you. I, I'm it's the most excited. It's the, it's the thing I'm most excited about in the last six months. Okay. So this here is, is it. And this is why it's amazing. Let me just show you a couple of things. Number one. So it's really cheap, right? So you guys might think, yeah, I'm paying $20 a month, right? The reality is once your business grows, that $20 a month is going to grow with all of these apps that get you, especially active campaign. They are shocking. I'm an active campaign user using them for seven years. Their prices are just escalating ridiculously. And so now you get the same product you got for hardly anything you're paying like $100 for. So that's, that's the problem with some of these companies. But anyway, let me show you this. So contacts. Um, this is the contact. Now look at this. Um, if you let me just do JC. Look at this. So I can. Uh, I can send email. Just click here. Here we go. All right. So this has two-way SMS. So I can write an SMS message here. And then I send it and it goes to their phone. And then when he replies to me, it comes up here as an SMS. And then I can write back to him. So I can have a two-way SMS conversation with a client in my CRM. That's amazing. Then you can do email, which a lot of them can do when you can send email back and forth, okay? Um, the other thing, it has appointments. So it has Calendly built in. So you know how you have to pay for Calendly? Um, well, now you don't have to. If you buy this, it has Calendly as part of the app. So this is what it looks like. It's just like Calendly, it's amazing. So you don't have to pay for Calendly. It also has, now the campaign builder where you send automated emails is phenomenal. So if you click here, um, let me just webinar reminders. Have a look at this. This is something you can't do with almost all of them. So what you do here is you have a webinar sequence and then you have a date that the webinar is on, Friday the 21st of August, okay? And then you can say, send this email immediately, but send this email 72 hours before that date. Can I just say to do this on Keep, Active Campaign, can't do it on MailChimp, all these apps, you just can't do this. It makes it so easy, but you can also send an SMS. So your SMSs, and your emails are in the same campaign and you can send them just as easy as each other. Look, you just write the SMS and send it. But remember, it's two way, this is the big one. When you use Active Campaign and someone SMSs you back, you don't get that SMS. It just goes into the oblivious hole, right? They don't care. Active Campaign doesn't care about your emails. So your SMS is coming back. With this app, it comes back, it comes into your profile and you can reply to it. That is powerful. I've had so many people SMS me back when we say, hey, the webinar is starting in a day. They're like, oh, sorry, Mal, I can't make it. I SMS them back. Well, why don't we get on discovery call? It's amazing. Okay. So this is built for, um, it's really built for people who are serious. Okay. This works with SMS and Australia. Too. Yes. You can get an Australian number because it does it through Twilio. So you'd integrate Twilio with it and it does SMS and send SMSs. I do it in America and Australia because a lot of my clients are in America. So I have, I send to both. Okay, what, um, what's also awesome is this thing called opportunities. So this is a sales pipeline. So, um, you know, like it's a sales pipeline. It's, it's built in. Now, a lot of these apps have it, but What's great? No, Active Campaign, you've got to pay a fortune for this. Their, their one starts at like $125 just to get it. And then, well, let's just have a look. So, to get this functionality with Active Campaign, which I think is the best out of all of them, below Keep and Infusionsoft and Entreport. So, this is the next best one. 
So you look here, if you want the sales pipeline, it's 97 Australian dollars, but that's only for 500 contacts. So you go to a thousand, two and a half thousand is 160 Australian dollars. And if you got 5,000, which isn't a lot, 225. So with this, it's like 97 US dollars, that is, a month. And you get unlimited users. Over here, you get 25 users, okay? Keep, is, keep gets you because they rip you off with users. Like if you go over three users, it's like $50 a user. They give you a very small amount of contacts. You got to buy more contacts. It's just, it's crazy. This, these people are one size fits all. Okay, so you've got the pipeline. Uh, what else do you have? Oh, let me show you this. So this is um, this snapshot. Okay, any other questions? So look at this. This is going to blow you away. You've been using Aweber. Yeah, so Aweber can't do any of this stuff, Alfred. So Aweber is just sending emails, okay? And maybe a bit of automation. So no Calendly, no sales pipeline. Because I'll show you something with the sales pipeline I haven't shown you yet though, but look, funnels. So you know ClickFunnels has a funnel builder? It has a funnel builder. So you can build funnels just like ClickFunnels. And you can edit the page. You can edit the page and you can build out your whole landing page and funnel right within this app. So ClickFunnels is normally $97 a month just for ClickFunnels, just for landing page builder really. And this has all of it. It has Stripe payments, you can make payments, but I don't really care about all of that. I don't care about payments because most of my clients are service-based businesses, but look at this, websites. So you can build your whole website in here. So we're actually building a website in here now I don't know if you guys know, but I do something called the Sales Driven Website, which is a special website. If you go here, you'll find out about it. The sales Driven Website, and we build a marketing engine into your website. But to build this website, you know, there's a lot of effort that goes into building a WordPress website. Um, and if you read that, you'll learn heaps. But with this, this website, it comes with a website builder. And so what we're doing is we're building our sales driven website into this. So what we're doing is we are replicating, um, we can, what we're doing with our clients and our students that, that we're coaching is we are building this whole thing out with all of your campaigns, the webinars, eBooks, um, lead magnets, your funnels, the website, um, you know, sales pipeline. Because what you can do with the sales pipeline and what we're doing is where when we get a new student, we replicate this and give them um, the whole thing. So they don't have to build out emails. They have everything. They just modify things. So I'll just show you here. Um, one more thing. Oh, yeah, there's a membership site as well, Andre. <laughs> so it has a membership site, which is the other thing we're building out. Um, yeah, so it's all hosted for you. So the whole thing's hosted. You don't have to worry about hosting or anything. So basically it's a combination of, you know, Kartra, if you've heard of Kartra, it's like that, but it's better than Kartra, I think. For a service-based business. So Kartra is good for other things. Like if you're an e-com or just a, a business coach and you just, it's pretty good. But this is good for real businesses, right? Because it has that two-way SMS. Yeah, it does recurring membership fees as well. It does, yeah, membership so we've built out a whole membership site here. So we're actually building this out because of all our students in our coaching program, we're just going to replicate this site. They get everything. And then, you know, when we, when we coach them, they don't have to build landing pages. They don't have to build automated campaigns. They don't have to hook active campaign up. So much time is spent on that. They just get it on a silver platter and they just edit the text to make it look like theirs. So this is the membership site here. Um, Sorry, we haven't configured it in this one. It was another one. But I was showing you something else I was going to show you. Okay, Adam, you got to leave. <laughs> Great. I will, yeah, I'll, I'll get you the recording. Okay, so let me just show you. I forget what I was going to show you. All right. So let me show you one more thing. So the other thing I'm excited about is over the last six months, we've had a lot of success with our clients and a lot of success with our students. And I have um, relaunched my course. Some of you may know that I have a Facebook ads roadmap course. 
And um, I've been doing that for three years now and we have just relaunched it and we're calling it the marketing roadmap. One of the strengths of myself, I think, is that I'm a sell, I used to be a sales and marketing manager and I don't just care about Facebook. Facebook's one part of the puzzle. It's like 20%. But if you want to really grow your business with marketing, online marketing, you have to not, you have to understand how to attract people, which is Facebook, but you also got to understand how to capture them. You got to understand how to nurture them using like the funnels I've showed you today, but then you've got to understand how to close them. And Go High Level, that app I showed you is the tech that makes that happen. Okay, and I'm excited because now we have from the very beginning to the very end, one piece of tech. We don't have to patch everything together. So now we have one piece of tech. And what we've done is I've created this program. Um, and what it does, oh, where is the program? Um, oh, it doesn't have the, let me just see if I've got it here. Uh, it doesn't have the outline. Um, it's actually a six month program. Oh, that's disappointing. It's a six month program and we go through a module every single week. We have two group coaching calls a week. And what we do is we build out your whole marketing strategy. So it's holistic. It's not just about Facebook. It's about getting someone from the very beginning to attract them, to capture their email address, put them into a sales pipeline, an automated Facebook pipeline, and also uh, a, a email marketing pipeline. Uh, and then once they say, I want you to speak to me, we teach you how to close them, how to speak to them on the phone and how to close them into a client. And that's holistic. It's not a six week program, an eight week program. It is a six month program. It's for people who are serious about taking their business and installing a marketing engine that actually gets sales. And we have so many case studies over the last six months. It was really over the last two years, but the last six months, um, we just had so many successes I've been doing this for a lot of businesses one-on-one -on -one, and now I do it in a group coaching fashion. So if you're interested in it, here's the URL, um, have a look at it. Um, the other thing is if you wanna to speak to me, you can either book in a strategy call here and lastly, you can just call me. So you don't have to, um, you don't have, you just book a strategy call in here. Um, you don't have to do that. You just call me tomorrow. I'm happy to talk to you. Um, but look, this is the thing I'm probably most proud of uh, in my whole career. This is everything I've put in. Um, it's not for the faint-hearted, um, if you're serious. And the people going through the program now are building an engine that two things happen when you build this. One, you have an engine that just keeps churning away and pushing out new leads and then appointments. And then you get on the phone and you close them. We teach you how to do all of that. Um, but the other thing, it's about longevity. And if you can get this right, you can replicate it. So if you do it for one segment of your business or you do it for one product, uh, or you do it for one avatar, you can then replicate it once you learn how to do it. I really believe that the best people to do marketing for business, small businesses are the business people themselves, the owners or the marketing team, not agencies. Now I have an agency, you know, most of my income comes from my agency because, and we get good money. But the thing is, like I do this coaching program because I actually think it's better for the client, a small business to do it themselves because you care more than an agency and you have to blow all your money. Like typically what happens with an agency is they have big fees and as a small business owner, you kind of pay them all this money and you go, I've got three months worth and it's got to work. And if it doesn't work in three months, your money's gone. You can't keep going. Um, but that's why I created a coaching program like this. So it's a lot less per month, I think. Um, it's down here, I think it's 700 a month. Um, and you get two coaching calls a week and you're with me and I'm working with you as you work through it and I'm, I'm consulting. So when I, when I work with a client, it's typically four to $6,000 to build the funnel and then 1,500 to 2,000 a month to actually uh, run the funnel. It's very expensive. It's like $12,000 uh, over a three month period, you know, not even with ad spend, like plus ad spend. So. The average small business owner can't do that. But what you do get when you do this is you still get me. Twice a week in a group session, I look at the work you've done and I edit it. I change the ad. Like today, someone came on and they said, Marlon, here's my avatar. And I'm like, oh, I don't, that avatar doesn't work for me. Like from all my experience, you should go with this avatar, not that one. You know, they were passionate about this one, but I said, that one's too hard to find on Facebook. And that insight that I give, like I give that to my clients that pay me top dollar but you get it in a detailed way. And then you get all of my processes that I use and my worksheets, you fill it out and then I look over it. When you come to launch your campaign, like in 
like a campaign we showed tonight, I actually, I'll get you to build it, but I'll check everything before you do it. And I'll make extra suggestions and I'll share computers with you and I make it happen. Um, I don't just tell you what to do. I don't see it as coaching. I see these coaching calls the twice a week, it's consulting. So I get on and I consult to you. I block everything out. There's other people watching and they give their two cents worth when I ask them, do you think this ad would work? You're a consumer, would it work? But then when I work, I'm working and I'm working on your project. And when that's done, then you watch me work on other projects. Um, and you, you get so good at marketing because I believe fundamentally that the business owner should take control of marketing and sales in their business. And they shouldn't outsource it to agencies like me because it's expensive. And look, I, I do care, but not everyone cares. And I can only care so much for your business, you know, like um, as much as I care for my client businesses, I'm not up late at night thinking about things for them. I have allocated time to do that when I'm an agency because I, I only have so many hours in the day. But as a business owner, if you know the strategy and you know how to do it, like with my business, I'm up at night thinking, what's the next step? What's the next step? What? And when you have my skills to be able to put a campaign up quickly, it revolutionizes your business. Okay, so I've, I've got on a bit about that. Um, you can see I'm passionate about Go High Level plus this marketing roadmap. Um, do you have any other questions? Okay. Oh, um, David, um, it's called Go High Level. Go High Level. So gohighlevel.com. Now, if you do want to sign up for it, call me because I can give it to you potentially for the same price, but I will give you a whole lot more stuff. Right? I'll give you the funnels built in. So I will add a lot more value if you guys are serious, okay? All right, and then hi Marlon, is this suitable for e-com businesses? Um, okay, so go high level. If you're asking about go high level, let me speak to you about that. Well, the course, yes, the course is suitable for e-commerce. Um, E-commerce is the same strategy um, when it comes to retargeting, when it comes to emails. There's a few different differences. So there's two kind of ways you look at it. There are lead gen businesses, like service-based businesses, where you generate a lead and then you get on the phone and close them. Then there's an e-commerce business where you actually make the sale on the ad. So there is a slight difference in the end result, what we're looking for. So with a business like mine or an accountant or a physiotherapist, service-based businesses, we want someone to call us or submit their details and then we take the sale offline. With an e-commerce business, you make the sale online. So in my course at the moment are e-commerce people and uh, they are doing very well. So for example, one of them, um, Gather, they, are a, um, they sell flowers online, so dried flowers. Um, I think they cost like $120 per bouquet and they've been selling it and um, they are basically spending $300 a week and making anywhere from four and a half to five and a half thousand dollars return. So then they're, they're spending, they said to me, Marlon, $10 is what we're happy to spend on Facebook to make a $120 sale. And some weeks that's eight, some weeks it's nine, some 10 uh, and some weeks it's a bit more. It's like 13, but it goes up and down. Okay. Uh, Oh, Irene's here. Yeah, so Irene, how are you going? I just saw you raised your hand. So Irene's actually doing the Marketing Roadmap Accelerator course and Irene's just joined and we had our first um, call today. So welcome aboard, Irene. I, uh, I love our session today, Irene. It was, it was really fun. Uh, okay, so let's go, Marlon. Okay, I need to leave. Thanks a lot, Marlon. That was great. Thanks, Teresa. Um, when does the course start? Oh, so the thing with the course is you can start anytime. So I've made it. Um, I've made it evergreen. So what's cool about it is that when you start, you start with your videos, okay? And you watch the week's worth of videos. You do your worksheets, and you come, and then I help you. But that week that you come, you'll see me help people at different stages of their business. So some are running the ad, some are building the landing pages. They're at all different stages. Some are um, reviewing, and we're getting leads, and you're. And so when you come to that hour, you will see a cross section of, of work that's been done. And what it does, it trains you to when you get to that stage, you've seen it happen three or four times before. So you're not doing anything for the first time. 
And so it just makes you a better marketer. What's awesome about it is you see different industries. So you understand your industry better when you see someone else's industry and you say, oh, I could learn from that. Or, geez, that's, a, you know what I love is when, when you look and you go, geez, that's a tough industry. I'd, I'm happy with my industry. Because sometimes we're really unhappy with, you know, after 10 years, 20 years in an industry, we're like, oh, I'd love to work in another one. Then you see other people's challenges and you go, oh, I'm happy with my industry. <laughs> but what's awesome about it as well is you get to, mix with other business owners and they get to give you their opinion on your business. So typically when you say, oh, you know, Marlon, I've got this product and this is the ad for it and you love it. And then other people say, well, actually I wouldn't click on that because this is actually my problem. Like with that, I have this problem. And then you go, oh, wow, I never thought of that. And you change your ad. And so the benefit of seeing people at different stages and different industries makes you a much better marketer for your own business. And that's why um, we have this evergreen approach. And so it never gets boring. Did you? Yeah, never gets boring. Like you'll turn up today and you're seeing an ad and you're seeing you know, someone having a good success and then someone's struggling like, oh, that didn't work. And we're looking at it and we're saying, okay, now we're gonna change. And I just systematically work through and tell you what you need to change. So I say, okay, because for example, I've got a client at the moment and we launched the campaign and the leads are coming in at about $30 a lead and we're expecting five. And so uh, the client is like, Marlon, $30 a lead, that's way too much. And I'm like, that's fine. Like we don't expect it always to work straight away. Now, a lot of the time it does, but there are these rare cases where it doesn't. He's got a very hard industry. And so where he's kind of panicking, I'm not panicking at all because I just look at the numbers and I say to him, the click-through rate is high. It's 3% click-through rate. That means out of every hundred times we show the ad, three people are clicking it. Now the KPI we have is for every hundred times the ad shown, one person should click, one. And if we get one, that is an amazing ad. So this client, we're getting three times that. So, but then when they go to the landing page, terrible conversion rate, it's like a 1% conversion rate. So three times as many people are clicking that we expect to click. So the ad is beautiful. The landing page is terrible. So I say to him, there's no problem. The ad is great. Let's ignore the ad. Let's now look at the landing page. What do we have to change? And when you learn that for the first time and you see us do it, and then you see us, okay, what are we going to change? Let's change that. So we change it. And then you see it go from 1% to 5%. Then we tweak it and you see it go up. You're learning. You're learning. Okay. And this is what happens with people. They get a bad result on Facebook and they throw the whole platform out. Facebook's rubbish. It just doesn't work. No, that's normal. Like you can't expect life to always work the first time around. So what you do is you just have to know what you need to look at, look at it, change it, and then bring it up. There was a campaign I ran. Um, where I ran it for eight months on and off just as a hobby. And I couldn't get it to work. I was getting leads for like $10 a lead. Okay. And it wasn't, it was not good enough for me. So I kept changing it, changing it. And then COVID hit and I made a change and it just blew up. I was getting leads for $1.22 a lead. But, you know, if I had given up on that and I wasn't focusing on it, it was a hobby. But imagine if I didn't try again, like I knew what to look for. So I'd run it, I'd look at the numbers and I'd say, it's that. And then I'd leave it, I'd come back to it when I had time. Okay, change that. Oh, that's a bit better. But then when COVID hit, it just blew up. But imagine if I never tried three or four times. Um, and, you know, that's what saved me. If you look at that webinar here, have a look um, here. This one here, I explained the campaign. So this one here, my Facebook ads funnel that grew my business during COVID explained. That's the one that blew up. And like I said, most of the time with our clients, because we spend a lot of time understanding the clients, they work straight away. I'd probably say 70% of the time they just work. It's normal for me for it to work. But when it doesn't work, I know what to fix. And that's why the coaching is good. It just teaches you that. Okay. All right. Now, any other question? When does the course start, Maddie? Okay. Anything else? All right. So I hope you enjoyed tonight. Um, I hope you um, got something out of it. But more importantly, I hope you do something with it. Uh, and what I'm going to do is the next you know, until Christmas, I'm just going to be here every single week and I'm going to be teaching something that I've learned. Oh, let me show you one more thing. I should have shown you this at the beginning. 
Uh, yeah, thanks, Vlad. I call me Vlad. I'd love to. I'd love to chat and see how you're going. Um, uh, we haven't spoken in ages, so be good to catch up. Uh, let me just sh show you guys one thing, and I'm. It's. Um, Oh, here it is, here it is, okay. This is something that is actually now the foundation of the course I'm teaching, but I wanna teach it to you. I'll, I wanna show you this. Every week I come, I wanna show this because this is kind of the, 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 the blueprint to success. Um, basically, if you want your business to grow, you need to make this happen. So, and I'll, I'll give this to you guys. Um, let me just, before I explain it, let me just give it to you. Oh. That happened last week. It wouldn't go in. Well, it's saying it is. Okay, well, just tell me if it might go in. Okay, so this this is it. So basically what you want to do is run a Facebook ad. Now, it could be a Google ad. It could be a LinkedIn ad. It could be a YouTube ad. It could be a partnership who is sending people your way. It could be an email you send out. It doesn't matter what it is. The only reason I focus on Facebook at the beginning is because it's cheap. It's cheaper than all the others put together. But you get a Facebook ad, you drive people to a lead magnet. It could be a video, it could be an ebook, a cheat sheet, a webinar, it doesn't matter what it is. When they download that or sign up, you put a quiz on the thank you page. Okay. And so let me let me show you this quiz. So um, quiz. Actually, I won't show it to you because I don't want to get distracted. Um, you put a quiz on the thank you page and that quiz takes people through a series of questions that stretches the gap and builds pain so they can say, wow, I want to be here. I'm here. How do I get there? And by the end of the quiz, you give them a score and the score is generally a low score. And then you say, look, if you want to go through the answers to these questions, then um, book in a strategy call with me. Okay, this is for a service-based business. Um, then what you do is in the first week, you call them, SMS them, um, and email them, okay? Uh, but then over the next few weeks, if they don't respond to that, then what you do is you create one video for that week. And out of that video, you convert it into a Facebook ad that goes into your funnel. You convert it into an email and you send them the email. You then convert it into blog post, transcribe the video, make it into a blog post, put it on your blog. You then take the video, put it on YouTube. And then you take the video and you push it all through social media. And so you just every week or every two weeks, you just keep adding another video in. Your funnel starts building with Facebook and this is where you're nurturing people. All of these videos are trying to push people into a discovery call um, and then into a delivery meeting. Um, so discovery call is a 15 minute call where you say, hey, um, who are you? Can I help you? Do you qualify? And this delivery meeting is where you get on the call with them and deliver the solution or you get them in your office and they become a new client. This here is the key to success, okay? Um, uh, this is the key to success. This is what I've been doing for years now and I've really perfected it. And that's what I teach in the marketing roadmap blueprint. Um, and yeah, I'd love for you guys to have this, but did anyone get it? I tried to drag it in there, but um, what I might do, I might upload this and then I can share it as a link at some point. Okay, it didn't come through. Okay, um, quiz about your own about their own business. Yeah, so Vlad, with the quiz, the quiz is really important. I'm gonna probably do a whole session just on the quiz because the quiz is the most powerful thing, one of the most powerful things that we do now. Um, the quiz needs to be about them. It needs to be, so just say you are doing weight loss, okay? And you're dealing with a woman who um, are busy, uh, mothers, and they really struggle to, to keep fit. Okay, so the questions you ask them must make them feel like they have a problem. Okay, so it's not really about you saying, oh, do you have enough money to spend on me? No, it's about them. It's about building the pain. So you might say, do you have kids? And they go, yes. And you say, do you find like, you? do you feel like the, you're spending so much time with the kids that you don't look after yourself? If they say yes to that, that's a big problem. You've just hit and they've admitted it. Then you might say, do you find like you're not eating healthily because you don't have time? And I say, yes, well, there's another pain point. And you say, have you tried diets before? Yes, and have you had success? No, I haven't. 
Can you see how every single question is building the pain? Every time it's like, yes or no, 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 no. And by the end of the quiz, you built such a gap in the pain where they're like, okay, okay, I have a problem. So how do I fix this? And then you offer them a strategy call or a call at the end or a product or something like that. Okay. Okay, great. All right, so I better let you guys go. I, I, I love talking about this, but I've got to let you go. And because I didn't have to travel to Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane, because uh, I live on the Gold Coast, I'm happy to spend as much time as I can, but I think we've probably come to the end. Um, and okay, great. Great, Andre. Uh, great, Mike. You guys have been awesome. I've loved the chat um, going off. It's made it a lot more enjoyable. So this... Um, what I'll do is I'll embed this into the blog post. So go to the blog in a few days and I'll embed this into the blog, okay? Um, and so then you can download it. But this here is the key to success. Like just focus on this. If you're an agency, focus on this with your clients. If you're a small business owner, focus on this. Now we taught today, so everyone I'm going to teach out of this, we talked about the Facebook funnel, building the ad and showing it on week two, week three, week four. Next week, I'm going to talk about webinars. Now, webinars, I have had a huge success with webinars over the last six months. People are saying webinars are dead. Webinars are not dead. If you get the right problem and you, um, and you write the webinar in a way that actually helps you make sales, okay? And so today I didn't run a webinar like that, okay? So with the Facebook marketing meetup, I don't run webinars where I try and, um, convince you to buy something. So I did talk about my course, but that was a terrible explanation of my course. If I really wanted to sell my course to you today, I would have spent the whole time and I'm going to show you the strategy next week on how I do it. So when I run webinars to sell my course, there's actually a whole strategy I use. It's not a strategy that I have invented. Many people have used it and tweaked it, um, but it works. And I've been running one for a client three times a week because he was too lazy to do it. And um, I've had amazing success. I'm going to go through that webinar with you. I'm going to show you how we filled it with Facebook ads, I'll show you how we ran it to get people to make a decision to book an appointment and then you know, how they converted sales on the back end. So that's next week. And uh, I want to encourage you to come to that because that is really powerful stuff. And then the week after, we're probably going to go through the lead magnet. I'm going to show you how to build a lead magnet. We'll probably do one on the quiz. I will always relate it back to Facebook. Don't worry. Um, and then I'm probably going to spend a, a week on this, how we, how you create one video and you publish it to all these platforms because this is the nurture, okay? You can see there's attract, capture, nurture, and convert. This nurture section is the most important section. I think it's pretty easy to get leads off Facebook. That's a, that's a problem I solve pretty quickly with my clients. Um, once you get them onto these calls, if you're good, you can have a pretty good conversion rate. You can always do better though. This section in the middle is where most people will fail. And that's why this is so important, this video thing. All right, guys, great, um, great chatting. And I'll see you next week.